Please join me in praying for understanding. Almighty God, you are pure in every way and the source of everything right. Purify us now with your word, which is sharper than a two-edged sword. Send your Holy Spirit so that your word will be for us a fortress of truth, a wellspring of wisdom, and a fountain of life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The disciples found themselves doing plenty of walking. Jesus was always on the move, caring, healing, and teaching. On one of those long walks, these tough fishermen swapped stories. The tales grew bit by bit into bragging. They were sharing their most triumphant moments. This escalated into a debate over which one of them was the greatest. Who should be the leader in Jesus' absence? They went and asked Jesus, which one of them was the greatest? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This account is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Each disciple understood Jesus' words and command to be like a child in a slightly different way. For Matthew, the key characteristic of children to follow is humility. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mark focused on Jesus' words, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. The words that resonated with Luke were, for the least among all of you is the greatest. We are to be humble servants. Humble is defined as courteous, respectful, meekness, modesty, not arrogant, not prideful. A humble servant respectfully seeks to understand another's point of view, then modestly shares their own perspective. A humble servant strives to serve with others to create a loving, joyful world. <coughs> Biblical scholar Ben Wetherington sees a widespread attitude of entitlement as a major obstacle hindering our humility. Whether at home or the workplace, many people believe they are owed something. Sometimes it is reciprocal. The cycle of, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Sometimes it is justification thinking based on what I have given or sacrificed, surely I deserve more compensation, a better home, a better car, a more loving spouse, better friends, more obedient children. We even play the entitlement game with God. God, you know what? I'm a pretty good person, especially compared to these other people. I support your church. Why are you blessing me with... We want perks rewards, and bonuses in many different forms. We feel it is owed to us. This is a self-centered orientation, the opposite of humility, which leads to a vicious cycle of acquiring what we believe is rightfully ours. The Gospel of Matthew deals with this over and over again. As Christians, we are to be humble, remembering that we don't own anything. The earth and all that is in it is the Lord's. We are stewards and caretakers of God's gifts for a time, but never owners. Most young children are humble. They are not yet concerned with status, entitlement, and the world's pecking order or ownership. Most young children are gracious. Grace has absolutely nothing to do with what is owed, deserved, or earned. Grace is receiving the free gift of God's love and forgiveness and then freely sharing that love and forgiveness with others. Jesus said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If you were involved in VBS in any way, please raise your hand. Whether you taught, acted, cooked, cleaned, donated an item, or brought a child to Vacation Bible School. Raise your hand. Raise them high. You are great. You are 
welcoming Jesus. Well done, good and faithful servants. And if you feel like you've missed your opportunity, outside of the office, Renee has a sign-up for people to teach children this fall. <laughs> Jesus is endlessly patient and forgiving. Just a little while after this teaching, we get our second lesson regarding children. Then little children were being brought to Jesus in order that he may lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. What is it about children that Jesus would teach we must become as little children? Certainly it seems that we need to become humble. Perhaps we are to be teachable, pliable, so Jesus can lovingly mold us into that humble, serving, loving disciple. Children know how to have fun, laugh, and are often filled with joy. They marvel in the simple beauty all around us in God's creation. Jesus wants us to be filled with joy and quick to laugh. A child is curious and easily filled with awe and wonder. Have you ever noticed how children are accepting, giving, and receiving love with no strings attached? Children tend to be at peace, for they live in the moment, not in the past or in the future. Little children are quick to forgive and forget. They are eager to join in and be part of a community. Children are dependent and trust others to care and love them. A child knows how to receive grace, to delight in a free gift. Young children are innocent, free of hate, worry, and fear. They delight in all skin colors, orientations, and political affiliations. As you watch this video, ponder what aspect of a child God wants you to embrace. So now I invite you to turn to the person beside you and share what you feel is a quality of a child that we are to follow. I'm going to give you a four minutes, so about two minutes for each person, and I'll tell you when two minutes have passed. So share what you feel is the key quality of a child that we are to follow. Switch and let the other person share.
Take about 15 more seconds. All right, now I'm really going to take you out of your comfort zone and be bold. So I want you to move around a little bit and to find another group. And this time, try to, in three sentences or less, name that quality that you came up with that you're going to try to embrace. The quality of a child that you're going to try to follow. That quality of a child that you think God is calling you to share with the world. So you're going to have to move around a little bit, find another group, and uh, try to share that in three sentences or less. <laughs> Another sharp yellow, another shining gold. Some look precious, others ordinary. Some look valuable, others worthless. Some look gaudy, others delicate. As individual stones, we can do little with them except compare them and judge them and compare their beauty and value. When, however, all these little stones are brought together in one big mosaic, portraying the face of Christ, who would ever question the importance of any one of them? If one of them, even the least spectacular one, is missing, the face is incomplete. Together in the one mosaic, each little stone is indispensable and makes a unique contribution to the glory of God. That's community, a fellowship of little people who together make God visible to the world. Model the childlike quality you identified so that together we can show a beautiful mosaic of God to the world. Let us take a moment of silence to center with God. God has 